Yes. Uh, well, actually, yes and no. Target two is so difficult to figure out. Um, and it's totally below the radar screen. So uh, to learn about these things is really hard because if you read just the standard Wall Street Journal, it's not there. Financial Times, not in print. Um, you have to go like uh, online, go to Alphabell. That's what I recommend. And you got people there. There's actually a very interesting section in Alphabell called the Long Room where you have to be qualified to get into it. So it's mainly like traders, people that know the minutia of the markets. And um, it, it's quite, uh, quite interesting. Um, so, so what is Target 2? Uh, it's kind of like Fedwire in the US. It's the way that uh, the district Federal Reserve's the Fedwire um, control cash going to different parts of the, the country. The Fed is divided into districts. And um, money is wired between the different um, district Federal Reserves and then to the individual banks. So that's kind of the system that makes it work. And the Fed wires reconcile you know, a couple of times a year. It you know, works, works quite well. Well, uh, Target 2 is the replacement for Target. It's a long acronym, by the way. Uh, it stands for something. And, and, and basically, people have noticed something very interesting. And that is that um, in usual circumstances, all of these balances amongst the different countries' central banks, and the NCBs, the national central banks, are kind of the equivalent to the district feds in the US. And in the US, everything's netted out, as I say, a couple of times a year. But with the target two, notice that the balance in Germany has gone up dramatically. So effectively, um, what is happening here is uh, a couple of things. And I hesitate to go into the mechanics of it, but let me, let me, um, let me try. And let me give an example. So let's say that you're a Greek resident. And you've got, let's say, 1 million euro government bond of Greece that is one of your assets. But you are a little worried. Um, and you establish a bank account in Germany which is no big deal to do, right? It's an EU country. So, um, so how, does that, how does that work? So you go to your local commercial bank in Greece and say, oh, I'd like to borrow a million euros. And they said, well, you're gonna have to post some collateral. Oh, no problem. I've got a one million euro government bond. So, oh, well, you know, that's fine. That's perfect collateral for them, right? It has to be, right? So um, the, the local commercial bank takes that collateral. And um, then what they do is they go to their national central bank and say, I need the 1 million euros. And so the national central bank gets past the collateral. And they say, no problem. And then um, there's going to be basically a wire transfer to the German bank account. So you can think uh, that the ECB is now involved. So it goes to the ECB. And you can think of the ECB as taking the collateral now. And then the ECB uh, tells the Bundesbank that this is what's happening. And uh, basically, um, arrangements are made for 1 million euros to be deposited in this Greek resident's bank account in, in Germany. Now the way the Bundesbank does it is that it takes the claim from the ECB. It's just a claim. It's not the actual Greek government bond. It's just a claim 
uh, from the ECB. And then the Bundesbank actually sells some of its assets, which are high quality assets. It sells an asset to generate the 1 million um, euros, and that's basically deposited in um, the bank account. Okay, so can you see what's happening here? There's like a way, it, it, it's what will happen in a run. Okay, so if there's some probability that Greece will abandon the euro, then you need a bank account in Germany. Okay, so, so effectively, there's two important things going on. First, there's an imbalance where you see um, a huge increase in um, the target two claims of, of Germany. 400 billion euros right now. It's a record. And this is, many people think, is a backdoor way to, to bail out uh, the peripheral uh, countries. And you see almost the equal deficit situation in almost all the other countries put together. So that's the, the one thing. And, and, and basically, you look at it and say, well, you know, it's no big deal. We've got uh, a common monetary system. And it's also the case that if there was a default, that, um, that, that the Bundesbank basically has got a claim to the ECB, and that default would be shared amongst all of the ECB members. So you've got some diversification. Well, not really, because Germany is like 20, more than 25% of the entire system. So effectively, Germany is taking on risk in, as I say, two ways. So first, the imbalance in the target two. Second, they're basically ditching their high quality assets for claims on the ECB, which is holding low quality assets. Does that make sense? So you look at the assets of the Bundesbank. And they actually are uh, incredibly low right now and have been run down by exactly um, what's happening here. So the, the, the quality assets they're, they're selling to do this example um, that I just gave you um, are being replaced on, on claims um, from essentially an undercapitalized uh, ECB. So this is all the more reason that something dramatic has to happen to fix uh, this system. This is going on right now. And uh, essentially, I think that uh, I first saw this story in a, a German uh, newspaper, I wrote about it in, in my blog. Um, essentially, it is a backdoor way um, to finance the peripheral countries. So people in Germany worry about this uh, transfer union. It, it, it's happening already. It's happened already to a large extent. Now. We're talking 400 billion, um, and I say that's large extent. The total funding needs are, are much greater. Okay, so to be realistic here, we probably are talking over the next couple of years, um, let's say 750 billion euros for the banks and uh, a trillion for the governments. 1.7 trillion. Everything is being proposed, not even in the ballpark not even in the ballpark of what's necessary. People say you need the bazooka. Well, I haven't seen it. Um, not even anything close to it. You know, some contribution from you know, EU countries to the IMF of 200 million um, euros. First, it's not even clear that they can do that. Um, I don't think Germany can do it legally until they amend their constitution. So that's not gonna be fast. Um, it, it really, to me, it goes against the, the Treaty of Lisbon. I'm not going to be alone in having that opinion. So things have to change before that even happens. They've got maybe 200 billion euros left in the EFSF. And even with leverage, it's not going to work. The leverage they can get is going to be minor because effectively these countries can be downgraded. So they're not going to be AAA. So EFSF is not going to be AAA. So the amount of leverage is going to be not 
as much as they wanted. They cannot solve the problem. Anyways, we're only talking a couple of years funding. What happens beyond that? So maybe the, um, the amendments are made to the constitutions, maybe. Uh, will the imbalances be fixed in two years? I seriously doubt it. So we're back at the same spot. 